All right, welcome. My name is Lance Brand, and this is the AV Podcast from HEBISD. I am the audio-video production instructor at the Buinger Academy in Bedford, Texas. Today on my show, I have Matt Brooks, the video game design teacher at our campus. And the purpose of the, today's show is basically to go over these integration projects that we're doing within our own organization. Uh, these are multi-level projects with involving several different classes. And the whole point of the show and uh, what we're doing is to promote this uh, project within our own organization, hopefully garner uh, some support from different members of our faculty to jump on board and hopefully support this as well as our administration. Uh, welcome to the day show, Matt. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me, Lance. Uh, this is uh, really kind of a cool project, and I want to start off by saying thank you, first of all, for introducing me to the ADL program, for which I would not be here right now or involved in any of this. So thank you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, I I wanted to do something like this for a long time, and it took me a while to kind of pull the trigger on doing it. And I'm so glad that I waited to the point I did, because I feel like everything kind of aligned perfectly as far as the instructors that I've had, the, uh, the content uh, the in the program that we're going through right now, is, which is the Applied Digital Learning Master's Program at Lamar University. So uh, it's been a, a learning process for me, and uh, it's challenged me in a lot of different ways. I feel that both of us are pretty adept when it comes to digital learning already, uh, just based on what we teach. But uh, this has really stretched what I've been used to, and it's made me a better person for sure. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I think COVID kind of forced us all to be blended digital learning classrooms and uh, yeah, I think even even before that, though, me and you had the experience of our own campus mandating a integration project between the teachers on campus of our small, already small campus. So yeah, we do have experience in blended learning even before all that. So I think that this is a natural path for both of us, just because we we have our feet wet already. I'm glad you mentioned the. Uh the integration projects that we were kind of quote unquote forced to do when we were first starting out at this building. And it seemed very uncomfortable. It kind of uh, was very invasive because we already had our own curriculum that we were going through and we had to kind of stop down to do these projects with other classes. But ultimately what I found through those projects and through this program is that the students get way more out of it being integrated with another class. They are more engaged. Uh, I think they have more fun with the projects. It feels much different to them, and therefore uh, you get more out of the students and the better results in the end. Indeed, indeed. So tell me about your innovation project. I, I, I know that, uh, yeah, I think that you you are kind of already a little unfamiliar with mine since you didn't see the, the video, and I think that there's a lot about yours I don't know too. Uh, all, all I do know is that our our, our innovation projects are very similar because we're we we teach right next to each other. We're pretty similar subjects, but yours does differ from mine in a lot of ways. So go ahead and tell me a lot about your project. So how I came up with my innovation project was early in my education career. I would take my classes to a lot of the local universities to tour them. Uh, just to give them a glimpse at higher education and, and what's uh, what's available to them in this area. And one of those uh, schools I went to was TCU. And when I went to that uh, school, they had uh, vertically aligned several different programs uh, to create one video project. And so they would have the theater department supply actors. They would have the AV department do all the digital and uh, editing and uh, directing and shooting. And then they would they even went so far as to involve their uh, legal department, and they would have their legal students write contracts. Oh wow! For their uh, act- every class on the campus huh? actors. So you had several different departments working in unison towards one goal. And when you think about it, and this is what Dr. H at Lamar University has stressed, is that the more you can involve these people in real-world scenarios, 
which is exactly how a, a real world production would go. I mean, you would have all these departments working together for uh, one production. Uh, it just gives the students a, be- a better, well rounded look at what they have in front of them. And if they can develop those real world skills while still in high school, it's going to put them ahead of their peers and give them a much more competitive edge, in my opinion. For sure. For sure. I mean, I can't imagine even having a clear idea of what I wanted my career to be by the end of high school. So I think all these opportunities that kids have nowadays is very uh, mind blowing to me and exciting being a teacher. So that's kind of the gist of where my project is going, uh, involving your class to do the digital uh, backgrounds and so forth for the project and and involving the business English class to write the scripts and to fine tooth those. And then, of course, my class would do the digital editing and videography. So, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of my project. But uh, what what are you uh, doing in your classroom? That's that's another thing real quickly before I talk about my project is we are supposed to talk about our proposal. So we're, we're, we're trying to write a an actual draft for a publication, which is in promotion of our innovation project. So, right, the, the, the publication that we're writing obviously is going to help promote these projects to our administration and uh, our, our, our colleagues and even students by, by chance. You know, any way that we can drive people to, to the understanding of what our projects are, are about or what they're trying to accomplish is what we're doing with these publications. So right. what, what exactly is, is your project covering? Okay, yeah, that's what that's what our our publication about is just getting more eyeballs to our innovation project in hopes of it becoming a bigger thing, scaling it up. Correct. So my project, very similar to yours, definitely inspired by you, except I'm doing a a blended learning project with my game design students, and I'm hoping to collaborate with science teachers for understanding the details of neuroplasticity and also pairing with English classes to do the creative writing. So the narrative of the games will be written by English students and all the details of the science aspects with the science students and then my students will actually create these games with them. So in the end, the player is we hope that the player can learn about growth mindset and neuroplasticity just from playing these student-made games. How did you come up with that? Honestly, I, I took your your idea and I as the innovation project and just decided I, I want to do something different because I teach game design, not video production. And even though I, you know I could uh, have done something with your project that I still plan to help you with your project. You said adding backgrounds in yours. I I just want to have a completely different project. And it is very lofty goal to, to, I think, to be able to make these deeply scientific and yet fun games with multiple classes in a public high school. But, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to make it happen. And I think us getting more eyeballs, more ears on this, uh, more support I have, the more likely it can happen. I, I really th- I really like the idea of including the science in the project because I think our, our classes are looked at as art classes uh, from, a, from an outside perspective. Yeah. But really, our classes are very technical and um, bringing kind of forth that scientific uh, part of our, our jobs uh, can kind of open kids' minds to what is available to them after high school as well. Yeah, for sure. I think I think to further answer your question now that you made me actually think about it, I do think that one of the main reasons I did that as my my project is I, I love this idea of growth mindset and that anyone has the capacity of learning so much more than they think they can. You know, everyone thinks they can't draw. Yeah, you can if you spend enough time doing it. Michelangelo said. Uh, People wouldn't think I'm such a master if they knew how much time I spent doing it, right? So same same thing. And I think it would be important to note that if you want more information about any of these projects that me and Matt are doing, that you can find them at my ePortfolio, which is actually 
LanceMoran.com. That's L-A-N-C-E-M-O-R-A-N.com. And my ePortfolio site is just Transcendent-Learning.com. I'm not going to spell transcendent for you. You can look it up, transcendent-learning.com. I, th- I, th- I think on on that note, I think that's a perfect place to end our our podcast this morning. These projects are something special that's going to give the kids an opportunity to learn something outside of their their norm. It's going to give them a broader view of the the world around them and what jobs they may have available to them and may even spark their interest in another career field altogether through this process. So I think it's uh, fair, fairly necessary uh, for teachers to start looking at this kind of education as something that is more normal and a way to prepare our students to be more competitive in the global market. I just want to th- say thank you, uh, Matt, for being here this morning again. And uh, I look forward to I look forward to working with you, of course, uh, in the near future on these projects. Same here. And um, I think that maybe we should do more of of these podcast episodes. Maybe the the next episode could be about AI and Uh, how we can use it for our projects. Yes. Uh, I mean, it's inevitable. It's 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 already here. It's just how are we going to integrate it into what we already do in our daily lives? So that's the AV podcast uh, here in HBISD. I've been Lance Moran and, uh, again, Matt Brooks from the Buick Academy in Bedford, Texas. See you in the next one. Later.